I am Chris Slicks. This is my Aston Martin V8 Vantage, which we have previously rebuilt on this channel. And this is Stelvio Pass. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys our journey from Leicestershire in the United Kingdom all the way to Stelvio Pass with quite a big detour. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this one. It's been epic. Let's do this. With my car and my bags packed, it was then time to assemble the crew. With possibly the strangest trio of cars collected, a turbocharged Micra and two Aston Martins, we could then head down south to catch our ferry from Portsmouth to St. Malo. After a three hour drive from Leicestershire, we arrived at the ferry docks and queued to board the ferry. And as usual, as happens on every single trip we go on, myself and Matt were stopped at security to have the cars checked over, but somehow Boris the Micro managed to slide on through, God knows how. After we'd slid through security, it was then time to board the ferry for a short 12 hour journey into France. So that is the first stage of our journey complete. We have now made it into France. So there's step one complete and the weather is not looking the best. So hopefully it takes a bit of a turn for the better. Before we can head off to the first destination on this road trip, the first job was to fill up, which I'm sure we're going to be doing plenty of times on this trip. Once we'd adjusted to driving on the opposite side of the road, we could then power through to the first stop on our journey. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to Le Mans, the home of the 24 hour race, probably one of the most dangerous on the racing calendar and it's still going to this day. And this epic race bred one of the biggest feuds in motorsport history between Ferrari and Ford, which then resulted in the GT40 being completed, which then actually won the 24 hours of Le Mans. In 1963, after months of negotiation, Henry Ford II was set to buy Ferrari from Enzo Ferrari himself. This deal then went sour and left a bitter taste in Henry Henry Ford's mouth meaning he wanted to create a car that was going to completely destroy all of the Ferrari vehicles. After three years of trying, Ford finally succeeded in this, taking first, second and third place with the GT40 at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. You know what they say, when in Rome, overtake a 2CV, let's go! Get in! <laughs> Sorry. Can't take him anywhere, can you? Oh, Hannah just said you've got a small knob. <laughs> Bless you. So now we've established that Matt's hung like a shrimp, we can crack on with our journey. Been going out of my mind. Along this trip, we're going to be facing a few challenges, one of them being the weather, another one being cars breaking down, and another one being toll booths. If you've not got a passenger and you're driving through Europe, it makes it very, very difficult. Okay, Matt, what you bought? Tell us. Well, I thought I bought Mentos. Little did I know. The licorice inside and 
Oh my god, it's nasty. It's not the nicest of combos at all. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of not the nicest of combos, Boris is here. Oh yeah, with Jack McNeil. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with your car then, mate? What's going on? I, I think my gearbox has fell off. It's my selector. Okay. Selector. Okay, so I think what's happened is the bolts come loose or off, and it's basically when I was building it, the the I put the bolt in the wrong way around, and it kind of it had the exact same feeling as this. It wouldn't go into gear because the bolt was blocking it from going into gear. So we need a jack. I don't know where Jack is. You got a curve. There's a Jack there. <laughs> I've heard that one before. Do you know? Um, I don't know if people would have had money on it. What car would probably break down first? But this car's not broken down yet. All right. It's okay. Still, it is Having still it, going. It's, it's still small going. It's still going. It's just. It's just. It decides what gear it wants to go in. So why it can't go into gear? Is it all flopping? Well, no, no, no. It, it can, but it's. It's like stiff. It's like. It's I all... told you. Try changing oh, the, yeah, just... the the samurai sword for a bread knife. Yeah, might bread work. knife might do it. Bread knife would be good. <laughs> The first breakdown of the trip is completed. It wouldn't be a road trip with us guys if there isn't a breakdown. And luckily it was just a gear selector problem, which did happen again, but we managed to fix permanently after that point. But as the sun came down, we booked our hotel and we were ready for the first stop off for the night before we could crack on to the next part of our trip the next day. But I don't wanna be just another one of your skeletons. I'm starving, you man. You ain't dip the pool? No, not at all. Bro, I'll go in the pool. <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh. Tradition on our road trips is to bomb every single pool along the way, and this one makes no exception. That is, oh, that is lovely. Unbelievable, Jeff. After a quick dip in the pool, we are rejuvenated, rested, and refreshed, and ready to hit the road again. It's a really bougie dipstick. That's proper overdone, isn't it? After our first night completed at Orador Sir Glan, we could then hit the road again to head towards Montpellier en route to Monaco. So that was the next stop for our journey. What'd you guess, Matt? How many litres? 26. I'm going to guess 17 litres. Chris, what was your guess for litres? 16. 16. Moped. I'm pretty good at this. Not gonna believe it, but I guess like to the one penny off what my literage was, and he's like. Now four Phillips into our journey, you can tell the Astons were drinking fuel, but the micro is needing more fuel than us due to such a small tank. En route to Montpellier, we stumbled across something quite special: the tallest bridge in the world, the Milau Viaduct. This bridge is 343 metres high and 2,460 metres long and is that tall, sometimes it can even be above the clouds. After we'd crossed this marvel of engineering, it was back on the road. And as night drew in, we pulled into Montpellier for the next stop at our next hotel, but we managed to lose Jack along the way. <laughs> SOS signals. <laughs> I am the meaning of speed. <laughs> Is that going to last for tomorrow? How's it going? Very good, mate. Yeah. To the wrong way, but okay. gave me the opportunity to break the sound barrier, so I was happy. <laughs> Go! <laughs> Fill your eyes, they all over me. Don't be shy. Take control of me. Get the vibe. It's gonna be lit. Let's get back on the road. <laughs> it's the start of day number three, and this is where things get a bit more serious for me because it was at this point last time where my 350Z let me down and left me almost stranded in Monaco. So today, hopefully, I can make it into Monaco without any further problems. <laughs> nice one. Yeah, basically, I, I went round the roundabout so many times, I got disoriented, and I forgot which one was <laughs> Wow. Okay, so is it like a dual carriageway road or? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Can't wait. All right, well, Chris to the rescue as always. 
Another breakdown for Jack and Boris the Micro, so it's time to set the rules. The rule is three strikes and you're out. Yeah. This is the third strike. I may or may not have run out of fuel, but we've got it now, so we're okay. So we had one gearbox linkage failure, and then it went again, it's the second time, because we had fixed, but now this is, I think, his final chance. After a splash and dash in the micro, we could then push forward and we took a little stop off in Saint-Tropez before heading into Monaco. Matt? <laughs> oh. Can I have a quote for repair, please? Looking like... That bumper looks like it could... No, no, I mean, that's meant to be sitting behind the headlight. That's, yeah, that's a long way down. Yeah, she's, she's drooping. Could be a few clips broken on that. New bumper. Yep. New grill. Probably a new headlight. Yeah, could do with a new bonnet. Bonnet's lifted. Bonnet yeah. hinges as well there, Ben. Creased. And, um... Right as rain. Yeah. Wings gone back into the door. Oh, yeah, it needs more duct tape as well. That's going to crunch the door. Um, it's a write-off. You can't oh, repair that unless you're a registered Yeah, repair. unless you're a registered engineer, that's not repairable. That is definitely not repairable. Yeah! <laughs> it's failed the vibe check, though, because there is zero. Pina colada, so. is, yeah. There's a red berry colada. Oh, oh red berry colada. <laughs> it's a big tent. <laughs> <laughs> red berry coladas. Okay, taste test. Before pulling into Monaco, we wanted to make sure the cars looked top notch in order to get parked outside that casino and also outside the hotel with no questions asked. So a quick wash at the side of the road and we were ready to go again. So the cars are now looking a bit more presentable and I think they're Monaco ready. I've got a lot of hopes for the Aston. We've only got about a two hour drive left to do. So fingers crossed it can make it and we can do better than last time. The sun had gone down and the tunnels of Monaco were screaming our name as we powered through them and headed into Monte Carlo. And for our short stay here, we had quite a special hotel booked, the Fairmont. And it's quite a big deal to get your car parked up outside the front here and left here when it's valet parked. Look how it's parked! Look how it's parked! Nice, Jack! He always brings an element of class, do not he? <laughs> oh, Shane, look at him. He is flexing that micro. Flexing, I know. He does not give a fuck. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. I think the thing is, Jack owes us a Nobu after this. this. It's not going to be quite expensive. No. no, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole 10, 20 stuff. quid, something like it's that. It's two for ten. Yeah, two for ten. <laughs> it's when I buy just like eight red rolls. And also, like you know when you get a bus round here, on the back of the bus ticket, it's actually a voucher to get it for one ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <but it's incredible. laughs> So with the cars parked in prime position outside the Fairmont, we could go to sleep and enjoy the next day exploring the sights and sounds of Monaco, home of the rich and famous and the ultimate place for car spotters. And whilst we were doing that, we could go and check out the Monte Carlo Casino where we're going to be going later tonight to check out where we're going to try and get the cars parked, the two Astons and Boris the Micra straight out the front. In our finest Monaco attire, we took a short drive round to the Monte Carlo Casino in hopes that we could get all three cars parked out the front before we went in. Oh, 
That crossed me car. Oh, yeah. It's about crossing some people. Oh, yeah. Hey, Max, you want know what's funny right now? Oh. Outside Monte Carlo Casino, prime position, two. <laughs> crash damage car. <laughs> crash damage What a sight. But unfortunately, not all of us made it. <laughs> so once we'd got Jack back in our group, we could then hit the casino and see if we could leave at least without losing money. <laughs> we lost. The next morning, we were feeling humbled by the Monte Carlo Casino and wanted to get straight out of Monaco. Before we left though, it only seemed right to take the cars to the last place we did on the last road trip. Then it was time to cruise out of Monaco and head towards our next stop in Italy at Portofino. This is possibly one of the most scenic motorway drives I have ever took straight along the coast, but it's safe to say that Portofino is not necessarily car friendly. Can I just say, this part of Italy is no fun to drive in. Moped drivers do not care. The roads are so tight. It ain't fun, it ain't fun. After we'd squeezed the cars through spots that felt like they were only meant for motorbikes, we had finally arrived at our hotel for that night. Maximum stress mode right now, Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Wow, that was stressful. Again, all three cars parked right outside the front of the hotel, and then it was time to go and enjoy Portofino, one of the most beautiful little seaside towns I have ever seen. We then took this time to chill out, re-energize and regroup, and get ready for that next journey from here into Stelvio, where we're gonna be hitting Stelvio Pass the day after. <laughs> On the way out of Portofino, we weren't given the friendliest goodbye by the locals. Once we'd battled our way out of Portofino, it was safe to say we weren't going to get the best days driving today because instantly we were met by traffic jam after traffic jam on the way up to Stelvio. And we did actually pass through Monza and it turns out the F1 was on that weekend, which definitely didn't help. We have now reached our final stop off before we hit Stelvio Pass tomorrow morning and we are in possibly one of the most scenic places you've ever seen but you can't see it because it's night. Lightning. But there is a lightning storm going on in the distance so I'm hoping, oh. oh there we go, there it is. But I'm hoping the weather holds off for tomorrow and it stays dry because otherwise Stelvio's Pass is going to be treacherous, dangerous. Especially in Boris, gonna, I'm going to die. <laughs> We then took this time to relax and take in the sights of this incredible thunder and lightning storm and get ready for the next day. I know I said in the previous clip that this place was stood in, but check this out. We are now set to leave our hotel and head towards Stelvio Pass. The Astons are, they're all doing well to be fair, all the cars are doing well, they're all looking filthy, but now they've done their stunting, they're ready to be used properly. Well, Matt, are you ready? 
Ready. Whoa. Jack. Ready. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Now it was time to take the last drive for the final stop off on our trip, Stelvio Pass. Some people's idea of a holiday is spending a week by a pool in somewhere hot, but to be honest with you, as petrol heads, this is our idea of a holiday. Spending hours and hours driving on perfect roads in the most scenic of places, stopping off at somewhere different every single night. And it's 100% something I would recommend doing. If you have a car that you love, Take it somewhere different. Take it somewhere that puts you out of your comfort zones and make memories with people that you'd never thought you'd make. Embarrass yourself for someone Crying like a child And the boy you kicked Tom's head in Still bugs me now That's the thing Oh, and by the way, definitely come to Stelvio. I think if you're into cars in our generation, it's every single person's dream to relive Top Gear, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And obviously we'd seen this road on there before, but we still weren't ready for how good it was. Twenty-nine miles of hairpin after hairpin and perfect road after perfect road. It could not get much better than this. It is actually really good, it's so good. <laughs> Imagine if you washed with it as well, you'd never get a skin disease. <laughs> you'd never get a skin disease. And you wouldn't lose hair. I think, do you know if you washed your hair? No, wait, I've got hair again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Moments like this need to be treasured because as we know it, it may not be long until petrol cars aren't a thing anymore. So while we've got this opportunity to make the most of them and take advantage of roads like this, it's a must do on your bucket list. We spent the whole afternoon screaming up and down this road with two V8s and a four-cylinder Micra and having the best time of our lives. And let's take a minute to remember the cars that we have brought, the two Astons which have performed faultlessly, but I think really the star of the show is Boris the Micra, the car that no one expected to make it. At this moment in time, I couldn't feel more grateful spending time with people I enjoy spending time with, doing something that we are all passionate about and also sharing it with you guys at home. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and enjoyed our road trip as much as we have enjoyed making these videos for you guys. And I know this isn't everyone's idea of a perfect holiday, but for me, as a petrol head, I wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs>